Right now on CBS News Baltimore, we're following that breaking news and new developments in Annapolis. The state house under lockdown due to a security threat. Police have been searching the building with canine units. Staff and community members inside were told to shelter in place, and we now know that many of them have since been evacuated. Hello, everyone. I'm Vic Carter. And I'm Denise Koch. Now, we do have crews on the ground in Annapolis right now. We want to bring in Caroline Forback. She joins us over the telephone. Actually, um, Caroline? Yes. What can you tell us about where, where exactly are you right now and what are you seeing? Okay, so I am on Church Circle now, which uh, is adjacent to State Circle. Uh, a little street called School Street connects it, and I'm looking at the governor's mansion. This is where I've seen the heaviest police presence so far today. I'm seeing, um, looks like they've got an ambulance and uh, fire truck on standby, which is probably protocol. There's uh, state troopers, Annapolis police, and Capitol police here. No one is allowed on or near State Circle, really. All the little side streets that connect to State Circle are shut down. Armed officers are turning people away. They're not letting anyone drive or walk on State Circle. It's very clear they want everyone to just keep their distance as much as possible. This is the latest update I have from Annapolis police. This is the city of Annapolis. A uh, spokesperson for the city of Annapolis Police Department says they received a call at 5 o'clock for a threat to the state capitol. They joined with the Capitol Police and Maryland State Police in canvassing the area to see if they could find anyone or anything. They said they found nothing suspicious, no suspicious packaging or activities. So far, they have cleared the top floor, and many people are sheltering in place. Once the bottom floor and the grounds have been cleared, people will be given the all clear to go home or to go about their business. And I have seen officers with flashlights um, looking like they're searching the grounds of the state house. That's all I've seen so far. Um, again, officers are still asking people to walk away if they're walking towards State Circle. But other than that, people downtown are still milling about. It doesn't seem like residents or locals are being told to shelter in place, just those that were in the state house at the time. Okay, Caroline Forback, of course, we'll be getting back with you as the evening progresses as this story continues to develop. Also on the grounds at the State House is Pamela Wood. She's with our media partner, the Baltimore Banner. And, uh, we understand that you were there as this whole thing was unfolding. Yes, that's right, Vic. Uh, I was working in the ground floor of the State House uh, where there are press offices. A number of us were in there, and shortly after 5 p.m., we were told, you know, everybody shut your door, lock your door, turn the lights off. And we sheltered in place. Uh, we hid in our office for uh, 20 or 30 minutes or so uh, before police came in and, and, and banged on our door and uh, evacuated us out. Uh, we were initially outside on Lawyers Mall, the plaza right next to the State House. And then the police moved us over to the House of Delegates office building where we uh, remain being held here until everything is safe and given the all clear. We've been told, Pamela, by Caroline Forback that um, she got a, a statement from police saying that they have cleared the top floors and now they're, they're working on the bottom floors and once those are cleared, everyone will be free to leave. Um, you're in a different building, but are you still being told you have to stay where you are or are you being allowed to leave if you want to? Yes, this, well, this happened in the State House and they cleared out all of the people from the State House. I was on the ground floor in the State House building and they got us all out of here. I believe they're searching back through all of the rooms to be sure before they let people in. But yes, we are being held uh, by police in the House of Delegates office building um, and told that we cannot leave uh, for the time being until they're you know, fully clear that the, the threat has passed. One other quick question. To your knowledge, were there any meetings underway? Were hearings underway? Were, were legislators doing the, the work of the state? <laughs> Yeah, one thing that's important to know is the there's a complex of multiple buildings down here in Annapolis. The State House itself in the five o'clock hour does not have most of the lawmakers in it. The governor's office, the lieutenant governor's office, their staff is there. Um, the administrators and clerks for the House and Senate are in there. The Speaker of the House, the President of the Senate, their offices are there, and there's also reporters. But the delegates and senators in the five o'clock hour are generally down the street in their office buildings holding hearings and voting sessions. So uh, there's not as many people. They were not all in the building at that time. But still, yes, you know, dozens of, you know, employees and visitors and staff and journalists were in the building uh, at that time.
So to summarize, as far as you know, the state house was evacuated. People were moved to a different building, and now they're searching carefully through every corner of the state house to make sure that the threat was not real. Yes, that's what I that's what I understand. That's what I've observed, and that's what we told uh, is, is happening. So it's it's very wait and see for everybody who's here uh, in the state government complex. Any sense of how long you'll be held there? Uh, we're, we're not sure. The the, the police are uh, telling us they're you know waiting to hear an answer for us. I'm I, I'm in a room. There are journalists here. There were some visitors, some staff, um, high school students who are pages uh, are in here as well. So we're all just kind of uh, waiting. They have the the blinds drawn, um, and we're waiting for information. We've actually directly been told very little of what's going on, but thanks to reporting from WJZ, the Baltimore Banner, and others, we've learned a little bit more about what spurred all this to happen. You must have been frightened. Uh, I, I will tell you it was very scary when you are at work and suddenly you hear people yelling that there's a threat and that you have to, uh, you know, lock your doors uh, and, and, and be quiet. I was very shaken uh, for, for a while there. Uh, certainly, you know, workplace violence and gun violence is such a problem in our, our society and in our country. And you always hope it doesn't happen close to home. And, and hopefully nothing did happen, but it was very scary there for a while. Most certainly. We take it for granted, our safety and our security, and uh, this brings back to, uh, home that uh, places like this can be targets for threats like this. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, a few years ago, around January 6th, there were a lot of threats against state capitals. Um, you know, Michigan's state capital, you know, people threatened the governor. You know, at that time, uh, we were on alert here, but nothing happened. But, you know, Places of power, places of government, uh, are, are are often you know can be seen as as targets by people who are disgruntled. We we don't know the case here yet, but it is a sobering reminder about well, gun violence. And also speaking of the governor, to your knowledge, where was the governor at the time that this occurred? Was he in his office or at his residence? And uh, what precautions do you have you observed that they have taken in terms of protecting him and his family? Well, the governor's schedule for today at five o'clock, he was scheduled to hold a reception with mayors from around the state at the governor's mansion. That's right across the street from the state house. So that was on his schedule. I don't know firsthand if he was there. We haven't heard uh, uh, about his whereabouts, but that's where he was scheduled to be at the mansion uh, with a bunch of mayors who are in town. And, you know, certainly there's a large police presence around the state house and around the mansion. All right, Pamela. I bet you're going to write about this tomorrow. Uh, yes, you know we've been we've been uh, busy, you know, contributing to the story all afternoon. Uh, my uh, colleague here, Brenda Wintrode, uh, is with me, and we've been sending sending our, our reports back to the newsroom uh, to report the Baltimore Banner. Okay, thank you very much, Pamela. Let's recap what has transpired here this evening. Around five o'clock, uh, the uh, Anne Arundel County Police Department received a phone call, an anonymous threat, unspecified threat, on the state house building that you're seeing now from this helicopter video. Uh, as a result, an immediate quick response uh, by police officers who are there guarding and protecting that building every day as well as additional forces coming in from Anne Arundel County and the state police uh, to uh, search this building and find out exactly what was going on. So far we do know that they have cleared at least the fourth floor and they have found nothing there and of course they're going to work their way methodically throughout the entire building using canine units and other methods to find out if there is in fact a real threat or concern. And we learned from our media partner Pamela Wood who works for the Baltimore Banner that they were evacuated from the state house sent to the delegates building where they were told to lock down, blinds down, doors locked, don't move, don't don't go anywhere where they still are still waiting to be told the, given the all clear. We're going to go now to back to Caroline Forback who's on the phone and our conversation with Pamela brought something up. Caroline, I don't know where you are right now, but do you know whether the governor's mansion is in any way implicated? Have, have they surrounded? Have police surrounded? Or are people being kept away? Do you have any sense that that is involved in this situation? Well, yes. Uh, a couple minutes ago, I was sort of looking at the governor's mansion. As you know, it's a stone's throw from the state house, and that's where the heaviest police presence that I've seen was just uh, sort of lining the gate outside of it. I don't know if that's to say that it was implicated in whatever happened here at the state house regarding a threat of some kind, but I think it's probably protocol whenever there's a threat to make sure that the governor's mansion is secure. Um, 
right now I'm on State Circle, sort of. I'm sort of at the corner, and it does appear like things have eased up just a little bit in terms of uh, officers turning people away from State Circle. I'm starting to see some cars driving down State Circle and uh, less of a police presence now at this time. Caroline, uh, uh, how many other reporters have you been around in that area right there? Uh, and were any of them also in the building at the same time uh, when this entire thing uh, came down? I haven't ran into any other reporters right now. I was actually on my way out of downtown and then turned back around. So when I got back downtown, things were already pretty shut down, and I was uh, on King George Street. So I'm sort of on the back end of the state house where more of the residential area is. The other side would be where the Senate and House buildings are. So, so I haven't seen any other reporters. Our, our, again, our media partner, um, Baltimore Banner, had two reporters there. One of them, Pamela Wood, just talked with us, as I mentioned earlier, Caroline. She said they were evacuated immediately from the State House, sent to the House of Delegates building. Do you, do you know where that is? Are you able to see that from where you are? That's on the other side of the State House from where I am. So I'm on the, I guess I want to say south side. I'm on the side closest to the water um, where the residential area is. I know the House of Delegates building is very close to the State House. It would have been maybe a two minute walk for them. And they're still being held there, by the way. They have not been allowed to leave yet. Right. And I didn't we, know that, but that's good to know. And, and we can see from the helicopter there uh, uh, heavy, heavy traffic on the streets that are adjacent around the state capitol. Uh, many of them buffeted by buildings that uh, surround the, the, the Capitol building as well. So I would imagine, and I see this, even some traffic looks like it's moving on State Circle. Uh, are you seeing that as well? Yes. Um, like I said, I'm seeing, I'm starting to see people walk down State Circle from Church Circle, and I'm seeing a couple cars uh, being allowed onto State Circle now where. Uh, just, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes ago, they were being turned away by armed officers. I'm watching a car come up um, Francis Street and turn on to State Circle. So that's an indicator to me that things have uh, calmed down just a little bit. That's good to know. Um, you have not heard any sirens, have you? I know you mentioned that there was a fire truck, but you assumed that that was protocol. But you haven't seen any at what we would call police activity. Um, I've only seen police lights. They're, they all have their lights on, but I haven't heard any sirens. Right now, it would be fair to assume that this is a pretty much a controlled situation now. Uh, there will likely be a lot of police presence there for a while until they actually clear the building. But it feels like, based upon what we're seeing and what you're saying and the way people are describing it, that the panic part of this type of situation is kind of over. And right now, it's a sustained, methodical uh, effort to make sure everything is okay. Would you agree? I would definitely agree. I'm actually walking on State Circle now, whereas, you know, just 20 minutes ago I would have been turned away. So now that I'm seeing some families walk down State Circle, I'm seeing some cars sort of slowly drive down State Circle, um, and I'm not seeing as many armed officers out walking about. There's still a lot of police cars, but they're not out with, you know, their guns. Right. Well, that's encouraging. Thank you very much, uh, Caroline. Of course, we'll be getting back to you if we need to anytime, sometime soon. We're going to go now back to Adam Dubitsky, who, who uh, joined us a little earlier in our live broadcast over the air. Uh, Adam, thanks for joining us here as we are live uh, online at yeah. uh, CBS Baltimore. Uh, tell us about your current situation and uh, recap for us what you experienced this afternoon. Yeah, it seems to have quieted down a little bit. The people who are um, in the office I'm in right across from the State House right now have left and were able to walk down the sidewalk. Um, when I'd opened the door about 15 minutes ago, an officer told me immediately to get back inside and shut the door. Um, starting around 5 o'clock, I was walking past the State House on State Circle, the loop that goes around it, and um, an Annapolis uh, City Police car showed up. The officer got out very quickly with her um, gun drawn and started rushing towards the state house. And within, I'd say, a minute or so after that, there were several other police cars and you could hear sirens. And um, pretty quickly after that, there were also um, officers with automatic weapons um, in the street and lining up to enter the Capitol. And I saw about 10 of them in a row enter through one of the back doors of the Capitol, uh, or the State House, rather. And um, more recently, there were several officers walking down the street and then 
started going through the grounds on the uh, back of the state house. Um, but, it, you know, it looks like there's still plenty of police, but it, it does look like it's beginning to ease up quite a bit. So, Adam, I know you work with, uh, with Governor Hogan, former Governor Hogan, and you said yeah. over the, your uh, time with him, you would get threats by email, maybe phone calls or whatever, but nothing like this. We're, all we know is that it was an anonymous threat, but whatever was said generated this kind of response, which is a lot more dramatic than anything that you ever experienced. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, when you work in any sort of public building, you're always, you know, kind of taught to be on guard and to any, if you receive anything that seems alarming, you know, you just turn it over just in case. But this, in this case, the police were rushing in. They had um, automatic weapons and they were entering the building very, very quickly. Um, we never heard an alarm. I didn't hear a fire alarm or anything else like that. Um, we also didn't see staff running out of the building. My understanding is that the police were escorting the press and other uh, members out one of the other exits. But um, you know, all of the activities seem to be going on inside the state house. Um, saw several officers um, up on the scaffolding where it's being uh, rebuilt right now. And um, as I said, it seems to be kind of slowing down quite a bit. It also appeared from the video that we have seen that this is something that uh, these officers had trained for. Uh, there didn't seem to be a great deal of panic. They move very quickly. They move very methodically. It's, it's if everyone knew what their role should be and how they should respond to this type of situation. Yeah, they were. They were. I mean, you couldn't. There was certainly no yelling other than telling people to get off the sidewalk. But they had. Um, they, I guess the tactical team lined up and also just regular uniformed officers lined up in a row, um, as you've seen in probably all too many unfortunate videos, and um, very quietly, and then they just all entered the building. Um, there was not a lot of commotion. There was not a lot of um, panic. They just simply, they looked like they were just going through the motions on what they had to do. Given the times we live in, I imagine there were lots of thoughts going through your mind. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, you have a state house that is open to the public. You know, it's a great place to visit. Um, unfortunately, you know, these things do happen. And the good news is, is that I guess I'm not sure when the threat was called in or who it was called into, but the response was really immediate. You know, right. and it's, it's just great that they do have the, um, the state police teams, the Capitol, uh, the Department of General Services Police, and also the Annapolis City Police. Indeed. Okay. Thank Adam you, Adam. Dubisky, thank you very much. You got it. That concludes our report right here, right now. Of course, we will keep our crews in place and bring you more information as it develops throughout the evening.